We are on our cross-industry enterprise panel discussion. While we're looking and talking about understanding cybersecurity awareness and building a cyber-aware culture in enterprises, which includes importance of cyber-secured environment, capability building, wherein cyber awareness trainings and programs for the enterprises, automation and integration of cybersecurity in the operational processes, safe data, wherein the latest technologies for preventing data breaching and protecting critical data, technical strategies for preventing ransomware and phishing attacks, and creating successful cybersecurity team with organizations and sharing the best strategies. So very, very important topic right there. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, for this, we've got our esteemed set of panelists. First up, Mohammed El Mengash, the General Manager, Cybersecurity Strategy and Architecture, Saudi Telecom Company, Saudi Arabia. Well, Mr. Mohammed uh, is the head of the Cybersecurity Strategy and Engineering uh, at the STC, Mohammed, and Mohammed has led many successful cybersecurity transformation programs across different industries, such as oil and gas and telecommunications. He's somebody who's uh, held several uh, leadership positions in many organizations, such as uh, Mobili and Saudi Aramco. Also, we're joined by Sanjeev Madhavi, the Director of Technology, Asiad the Group, Oban. Well, Sanjeev is a seasoned IT executive with 23 years of global experience in dig digital transformation, value chain uh, innovation, new business uh, ventures and operational excellence across multiple industries in supply chain and logistics. He's somebody who uses his global uh, leadership experience in process improvement, project management, technology roadmaps, enterprise solutions delivery, and business enterprise ent entrepreneurship to deliver a positive impact in the industry. We're also joined by Maher Al uh, Maskari, the head of information technology infrastructure and support, Samyar Oman. Well, Mr. Maher, uh, being an IT professional with over 16 years of experience in the most IT uh, divisions in both the government and uh, private sectors. He's somebody who's got an excellent management skills in uh, leading IT staff and specialist knowledge in designing, planning, supervising, and executing of IT projects. Also, we have, have uh, Nadeem Khater, the uh, Director of Professional uh, Services, Digital Shadows UK, Nadeem, uh, uh, since uh, joining seven years ago, Nadeem has helped uh, hundreds of uh, customers implement the dig digital risk monitoring solution Searchlight. He uh, experience in uh, digital risk detection, analysis, and uh, mitigation across all sectors and covering various uh, use case ranging from dark web monitoring, data leakage detection, and intelligence analysis. And this entire conversation and the panel is going to be moderated by Nisreen Al Khatib, the women, uh, women in uh, cybersecurity, Middle East, uh, Lebanon. Well, uh, Ms. Nisreen has 20 years of experience in information security, cybersecurity, risk management, and business continuity in leading banks in Lebanon. Uh, she's an active member in Women in Cybersecurity Middle East, and uh, she's also uh, leads the tech liaison and ambassador in uh, Lebanon. Well, thank you so much to our eminent panelists for giving in your valuable time. Uh, with this, I'd like to now pass it on to Nisreen and also our uh, esteemed attendees. Uh, if you do may have any questions, please do type it in the Q&A uh, box. So uh, we'll pass it on to Nisreen if time allows towards the end. Over to you, Nisreen. Bhavna, if, I'm, if I may so interject, yes, please, I'm sir. sorry to add in, but I believe in terms of my current designation as well as my credentials, yes, uh, I believe they have changed, but I, I believe <laughs> you, you, you didn't. Receive the brief on that. So I'm currently the Chief Digital Transformation Officer of Kimji Ramda Sales Okay, uh, perfect. The, the writer that you have. Yes, yes. I, I believe the update wasn't done, unfortunately, uh, Sanjeev. But uh, thank you for correcting on the same. Uh, this is, you know, an update is always uh, what is necessary. So thank you on correcting on the same. Uh, with this, uh, Nisreen, I'd love you to take it forward uh, with your esteemed panel. Over to you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you all for joining us this afternoon for this panel. According to many studies, a high percentage of cyber attacks were caused by human error. We know that actually it must have been a user that clicked on that suspicious link or used the same password all over again, or maybe downloaded that suspicious file. And many security professionals consider people to be the, the weakest link in cybersecurity. Now that's right. But I have a question to ask ourselves. I have some questions to ask ourselves. Are we doing the right job 
to help people get the right knowledge and equip them with the right techniques so that they can act in the right manner? Do they have what it takes to, do, to take the right behavior against such threats? Now, if we keep humans aside, let's think how we deal with technology. Do we just get a security device and plug it on the network with the vendor's configuration? Of course not. We do studies, we do assessments, we do study to our network, we get the best device possible, we configure it according to our environment, we constantly, uh, we harden, we patch, we update, we upgrade, and you follow the best practices, we, we monitor, etc. Now, if we look at our behavior towards human security, awareness, and education, are we putting the same effort of time resources and money to ensure that our people are getting well trained and educated in a manner that will equip them to be our first line of defense and not the weakest link. User security awareness and education was generally among the least tackled domain in security awareness. And many companies used it or did it just for uh, compliance or as part of the checklist they had to check. However, luckily, recently things have changed and the trend has been changing towards more focus and more attention toward this particular domain and security. Today, in this panel, I will be discussing with my, my esteemed guests several aspects of security awareness and education. And I will start with my first question to understand what are the main pillars of security awareness and education at the organization. And I would like to direct this question to Mr. Mohammed Mengash. Mr. Mohammed. Uh, hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, happy to join you today in this panel discussion. <clears throat> uh, thank you, Nisreen. Um, actually, uh, as you mentioned, uh, truly the human factor, according to one of the studies, uh, several studies, actually, one of them by BCG, is 70% of the data breaches resulted from uh, uh, human human error, either intentionally or unintentionally. So, uh, cybersecurity awareness is a must. It's not something like good to have or religion. Uh, before going into the pillars, um, I would like to highlight that for me and for my organization, we are not look, looking at awareness as a program. It's better to look at it as an integral part of the culture transformation. And the reason for that is the sustainability. If we want to have a sustainable, you know, awareness and the practice of cybersecurity and to instill that in the DNA of the company, then we need to include that as part of our company culture transformation. Uh, three principles actually when defining the cybersecurity um, awareness. The first one is the executive management buy-in. As you know, uh, cybersecurity cannot be working in isolation. Uh, everybody in the organization no, need to embrace that. And we have to start from the top. It's very crucial to have the senior management, the executive management buy-in. This is the first principle. Uh, the the uh, second thing is including that, as I said, in the cultural transformation. And the third one is not looking at it as an ad hoc, let's say, program. It has to be structured in a sort of a framework. See some of, of organization focusing into training, email sent without really having a complete uh, framework. So if talking about the pillars, uh, when establishing at STC our cybersecurity awareness, first of all, we have a specific pillar for executive uh, awareness. And when you say executive, it's very important for that awareness to be customized for executive to touch the corporate mission and the uh, strategic objectives and personalize and simple to get the buy-in of the business, for example, or the management of finance, for example, to support you and to be uh, sponsoring your program. Uh, we usually have a, a very frequent awareness, even personalized to some executive to search some, some information in the dark web so that they have an understanding of what's going on there. Uh, uh, the second thing is we have to customize it. We don't have one awareness program that fits any organization. It has to be customized per audience. And what we have done for that, 
We have one for all employees. We are, we are having uh, a program that touch the journey of the employee from hiring to retiring. And you can imagine every week we have two sessions. We have a coupled our work with HR and we have an onboarding almost every week for a new joiner. This is the first customization. The second one is for the third party. We realize the risk that coming from the supply chain. So we have a specific a track also for the third party. Uh, whenever they join, whenever there is a contract signed by any third party through managed services or another. Uh, the third customization is uh, basically focusing into certain people, the privileged user. Specifically, when we talk about, you know, the developers, uh, even we reach to a point that we don't grant an access or a privileged access to, to, to any developer or, or any, let's say, admin for our network. For example, unless he or she passes cybersecurity awareness that customized and relates to the risk associated to that, uh, basically, uh, segment of, of, of people. The third uh, uh, pillar, if I'd say, is the seasonal awareness. We understand that we have holidays. We have, for example, COVID-19, which require a, a specific tailored uh, customization of our awareness and others. Uh, this is also part of that. Uh, most importantly, the fourth one is coupling our program with our risk register and emerging risk. Selecting the topic is very crucial, and we don't want you know to waste our efforts in focusing on a topic that is not representing a risk to the STC group, for example. So uh, the coupling that with our risk register is, is crucial. Uh, the fifth is the effective channel. Uh, we, uh, we capitalize on, 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 on our company as a leading you know, digital service provider. So SMS is there, emails, uh, classrooms, learning, and what have you. And in particular, we are focusing on the innovation on delivering that material moving from telling toward adoption. We don't want the enforcement do this and don't do that, but rather having it as a story so that every employee adopt that security. Uh, the, the, the final pillar is the effective performance and metrics. Of course, we need to measure how we are doing. So having a robust KPI is there. Uh, as STC, as I said, we also have an obligation toward the community. So we make sure that one of the pillar actually is to educate even the employee's family. We, be, we believe in employee and, and, and his or her family to be educated as well. So we have a specific program for their family. Also in our customers, we have millions of, of, of awareness messages sent in, in more than uh, five languages also. This is part of our community. And this is how we, we are establishing uh, our cybersecurity uh, culture, let's say transformation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Muhammad. Actually, you touched on several important points, such as the culture, the executive management, tone on the top, the third, third party, uh, among others. Now, I would like as well to hear the, uh, to direct the question to Mr. Nadim Khater, the same uh, question. Sure. What are the main pillars of security awareness at your organization? What, uh, how do you handle this uh, domain? Sure, it's a tough act to follow, Muhammad. You 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 answered most of the answers I was going to provide. But um, at Digital Shadows, you know, being a SaaS security provider, we really have to practice what we preach. Um, so I'm going to present a few pillars of our security awareness. A lot of them are going to be already uh, covered in, in Muhammad's answer, but hopefully from from a different angle and, and a few additions. Um, one of the first things we do before starting on our uh, security pillars and security awareness is we try and understand the threat landscape. You know, what is the threat landscape for organizations like ourselves? And even when we're advising our customers, we'll take that approach as well. So that's the first step we do. And I think this is on Muhammad's point around the, the uh, coupled it with the, the uh, risk uh, register, right? It has the risk you're trying to mitigate has to be relevant to you. You don't want to train your employees to identify uh, phishing, for example, and you're in an industry that doesn't, uh, you know, in most people don't have email inboxes, right? It's, it's not efficient. Um, we, I personally, as well, when I get involved in, in risk awareness and, and, and pillars, I try to, to be very methodical. And, and once we identify uh, the, uh, the threat landscape that, that's relevant uh, to our organization, we'll follow the people, process, technology, you know, a very established uh, methodology. Um, and under each of those pillars, you know, we'll try and, and, and uh, apply some programs. 
before starting any program, again, like like Mr. Mohammed said, it has to be top down. There has to be buy in from the top. Um, you know, employees will take it much more seriously uh, once the, the project is is uh, there's an update with the project with the leadership, and also it, it'll it'll smooth things over in terms of uh, getting stuff done and getting all the uh, the workflows uh, approved. Uh, but some specific if I was to dive into specifics, we'll run red team simulations. Um, our company is very keen on that. Um, out of the blue, you know, without any warning, um, it's company wide, and sometimes it's. Uh, it's, it's uh, department specific like the developers right they'll get specifically fished emails for them uh, our sales i'll say i'll say this reps aren't big fans of this but whenever you know it's end of order and there's there's a big push to get deals closed we sometimes will run uh spear phishing simulations on that time where they're much more aggressive about replying to emails and much more prone to maybe open those emails um we also found that interactive media has a much better response with, with younger generation employees um, you know, the training videos, training guides, things they can interact with, the courses, um, that, that helps with our security awareness program. One important thing, which also I mentioned, you have to tie it to the employee's journey uh, in your in your organization. You know, you, we tie our security awareness to performance reviews. However, we don't, we reward good performers, but we don't punish bad performance. That's that's very important, we found, in, in, our, in our organization. Um, another thing I'm really... Uh, really keen on uh, personally is metrics, ROI tracking, metrics, KPIs. Um, you have to track them uh, throughout the uh, the life cycle of these projects. Um, I think that's that's pretty much all I wanted to cover. And as you saw, um, you know, I'm, I'm touch on all of it, but hopefully that sheds some insight. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Nadim. Actually, you both touched on several uh, important aspects that are uh, key for uh, any security. Uh, uh, culture or any security awareness program to enhance the awareness culture in the organization. Now, uh, due to COVID, we have uh, moved several workforce. Actually, most of the workforce has moved to remote uh, working. And for sure, this has uh, imposed new challenges on security in general and on awareness uh, in particular. Uh, so I want to ask, uh, what are the challenges or opportunities maybe that remote access has introduced to user security awareness programs and how you are tackling them. I want to hear Mr. Sanjeev's opinion. Uh, you are on mute, Mr. Sanjeev. Apologies for that. I was just trying to correct my uh, volume here. Uh, thank you, Nisreen. I think I really appreciate you know, and uh, feeling very privileged to be part of this esteemed uh, panel discussion today. As, as all of us are very well aware, I think we are, we are living in a more you know, connected world and cyber crimes are always on the rise. Now, with COVID, we realize there are more intricacies that have been brought into the structure. Uh, this also means that by all means, the last connectivity point, which is where we have humans interacting with different machines or possibly with other humans, uh, the challenges are also relating more or less to the, to the human interface. So we have to have access and controls about the office productivity suites, which most um, you know, employees and human resources within the organization need to access, how to get them access to all of these tools remotely. Uh, then we are looking at the files, the information, even the enterprise applications, or even, even smaller applications, which they need on the course of their day-to-day -day work. And how exactly do we allow them secure and safe access in order to not bring down their productivity and yet manage a very secure environment from an organizational perspective. That's a big challenge. I think the other significant challenge is that in today's world, most organizations have either are either in the path of moving to the cloud or they have already initiated that journey. But not many have either got a complete on-prem or a complete on-cloud setup. So most hybrid organizations or the new age IT structure that we have in a hybrid mode uh, it requires one to cross many hurdles. So in essence, I can sort of compare it to uh, maybe a, a road journey from Muscat you know, to, to Doha, Qatar, where I have to cross not only Muscat and Oman borders, then into UAE borders, and then into Saudi borders and checkpoints. So you're actually, you're crisscrossing over firewalls, you're crisscrossing sometimes even of domains. And how to make that seamless for a user, that is, is, a, is a strong challenge. The third aspect is again, as IT professionals, we certainly hold responsibility. 
and how do we try to make the user security easy towards accessibility as well as tighten our enterprise security to make sure that all the structures and endpoint security, everything is taken care of. Especially when we have the last network node involvement, including the IoT devices, mobile devices, bring your own device kind of setup, or even iPads and other, other elements which are brought in. That, I think for me, are the, are the three important challenges. Quickly from an opportunity perspective, although um, it definitely has opened up a significant plethora um, of opportunities. The first and foremost being the user productivity. The user productivity is much higher. Uh, and in terms of getting the amount of work perform and work output, individually, there is an increase. Now, as well as collectively as an organization, we are then achieving more and more as a business unit or as an enterprise. Uh, certainly, it also helps to break down the barriers, you know, in terms of, you know, setting up or introducing yourself with newer team members or with new members within the organization or within the community, which otherwise would, would require a physical presence that is no longer found because of because of this scenario where everything is virtual, virtual meets and, and video conferences such as what we're doing today really, really adds you know, a, a strong and fast feel of connectivity. Um, however, uh, what I would say, this is not exactly an opportunity or a challenge. You can actually take it both ways. The, you know, the feeling of being connected to the organization as a single unit, you know, brings a strong sense of achievement and association to, to uh, you know, human beings as well as the company resources. Uh, but at the same time, you know, it also sort of brings a new set of mental wellness challenges because you're constantly isolated and your only means of interaction is a screen. Uh, so again, in that sense, it is a challenge as well as an opportunity. It just depends on how you try to, you know, make sure you address it. So very quickly, those were the you know, highlights from my side. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sanjeev. Actually, yes, many of us are facing uh, these challenges, but uh, it's a fact that we have, uh, we had to deal with it, uh, not with uh, our choice. Now, I would like to direct this question, uh, the same question to Mr. Maher Al Maskari. So what are the challenges or opportunities that Remote Access has introduced to security awareness uh, in your organization and how you're tackling them? Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first of all, I, I feel really uh, uh, pleased that, uh, to be in this uh, discussion panel. Actually, uh, Mr. Sanjeev has covered most of the answer that I already prepared. And uh, he touched mostly in the organization level, where uh, I'm going to add more into uh, the user level, into, into, the, into that terms. We all agree that when the pandemic has been started over here, uh, most of the employee has actually uh, working from home for the first time. And actually, they don't know what will be the difference. <laughs> they need to, to do their day-to-day -day task without any interruption. And uh, we discovered that most of the employee never been exposed to any uh, security awareness program, actually, at all. And although, although, although those employees who already had uh, a security awareness, that security awareness were, was fit to them when they were in prem not when they are working from home. So this makes them in a, in, a, in, in a problem or they cannot how to position themselves in terms of security. So that is, that is one of the challenges that they came up over here. Actually, we discovered some of uh, challenges that, and actually we, this is something true happened, that uh, we realized that some of our users, they share their devices to someone else at home or friends in the coffee shop while they are working. So how can we keep those privacies? This is one of the things that actually a challenge because we cannot even uh, track our assets. When they are leaving the office, we cannot even track it. This is one of the challenges. And uh, we realize that some of the organization using uh, third party applications or software, which allow them to do the remote access, which don't have even a VPN on it. So this is some of the challenges that have been discovered. And uh, even for the, uh, for the subject that mentioned by Sanjeev, uh, some of them, they are in a hyper. They are not almost in the cloud. They are not almost in the prem. And uh, they, for those who are already completed their shift to the cloud, they forget to put an end-to-end -end encryption. And uh, that will make the whole connection in risk, especially for those remote users who is connecting to the network using a, an, an open network from a coffee shop or from the mall or from whatever. That is uh, some of the challenges. And uh, for the opportunities actually, uh, which already uh, came up in, in the pandemic right now, uh, there are some kind of uh, applications which, uh, or programs, softwares, which 
allow an organization to do a security awareness uh, while they are sitting at home. The problem over here is that uh, the security awareness for most of the employee it is intangible. They cannot feel it. Why? Because he said, this is not my responsibility. This is someone else's responsibility. But for those application and those software which already been introduced in the pandemic, it's doing very effective task of showing them in real life what is the security, which doing phishing, control phishing emails. Uh, those, those kind of an example will show that, wow, I did something wrong. Wow, I click in the wrong, in the wrong link that what I supposed not to click on it. So now those people, they start to become aware. Uh, one of the things that we used actually in our organization to overcome some of those uh, some of those risks, actually we use some uh, solution called desktop uh, as a service, where you have complete your environment on the cloud, and the users uh, they are have the rights to use whatever kind of devices to get an access to to to, to the cloud. And the, dev, the device over here, it will be like a method only to get an access to, 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 uh, to that platform uh, where our platform is securely on the cloud using desktop as a service. And in our solution, we use a Citrix uh, workplace that will help us out on that solution. And uh, this is uh, what I have to add to Sanjeev's uh, points over there. Thank you, Mr. Maher. Actually, yes, the pandemic has made us more creative and uh, uh, I believe uh, there have been several changes that uh, we had to adapt and to take it to our advantage. Now with the uh, skills shortage in cybersecurity experienced personnel, uh, what are the best strategies to build a cyber skilled workforce in the organization, which has the right skill set and balance between knowledge and expertise. And here, I, my question is not just about awareness, about in general the human aspect or the human factor in cybersecurity in general. And I would like to ask uh, Mr. Nadim to give us uh, his opinion. Sure, happy to. Um, I hadn't prepared for this question. It didn't uh, appear on the sheet, but happy to give you uh, my, my opinion on it. No worries. So um, in terms of the, the, the shortage of security professional, that's not going to be solved anytime soon. I mean, if you look at the numbers, you're, you're talking about millions, millions of jobs uh, that need filling. And I don't think there's enough people going to university that year in any major or in all majors, let alone cybersecurity specifically, because it's a very niche and very acquired uh, skill set. I mean, take my example. Um, I, you know, I, my bachelor's was in finance and investment finance, but I did a master's degree in counterterrorism, intelligence collection, not even in cyber specifically. I did take one course on cyber and I fell in love with it. And then I did some certifications to follow that up. But even after seven years at Digital Shards, I'm still learning. Um, so that shortage, to, to answer that first part, that shortage is not going to be filled anytime soon. I think the best outcome uh, or the best way out of this shortage is to try and skill up the technology, to try and rely on technology as much as possible on automation to fill some of the gaps, some of the menial tasks, like collection. You know, collection is a very manual, uh, intensive labor, intensive job. It doesn't take a lot of skills. You have to visit web page and copy paste and collect data. You can rely on technology to do that. Um, some uh, data agglomeration, data analysis, data tagging, you know, all of the the, the jobs at the bottom of the pyramid that are very labor intensive, that could be used, that we could use, sorry, technology to try and fill those gaps. Uh, but for the upper uh, upper skilled ones, I mean, I, I'm, I'm hoping I could pass to some of my much more experienced colleagues on this panel uh, because they're, they're, they have 20 plus years of experience each to, to, to answer that. But that's just my two cents. Okay, thank you, Mr. Nadim. Actually, I believe uh, you are a good example on uh, how we can... Uh, uh, fill this gap, being not a cyber security background, or uh, and you move to it, and you're working on that. Now, touching on the human factor, as uh, and as we said, as Mr. Nadi mentioned, that we can use some technology to fill some of the human gap. Now, here I want to ask Mr. Muhammad, how do you believe the latest technological advancements, such as AI, can be utilized to specifically help in the user awareness and maybe in preventing breaches, even if users have uh, done something wrong. So how technology can help uh, to prevent such breaches? Uh, actually, um, great question. Uh, there are a lot of uh, 
advance advances in uh, artificial intelligence and the, the others. I believe when it comes to people awareness, um, specifically, we need to touch into the behavior of, of, of the users. Having those uh, data analytics solution, uh, analyzing data that is pertaining to users access, for example. At, for example, what is the peak that you are user accessing from where? Etc. All these information, uh, once uh, they get analyzed, it can give you, uh, I would not say clear, but clear enough picture of the behavioral of every segment in your organization. Then you can understand, okay, the majority are acting at that particular time uh, from that particular place. Uh, usually uh, in a session, they can stay up to 15 minutes as an administrator, for example, of the network. So. This would help you detect the abnormality. Any abnormal behavior, it can be detected. Of course, there are some obvious, like for example, uh, uh, let's say failed login, for example, those are obvious. But what about that abnormal activities that are against the threshold of the behavior of some segments of your organization of users? Uh, those uh, can give you uh, a lot of information. And based on that, you can tailor your policy you can tailor your detection and response policy, and you can also tweak your awareness uh, toward uh, those segments. So I believe there are a lot of uh, things um, that can be uh, done, capitalizing on, on AI and machine learning. Thank you, this is my- Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Muhammad. Yes, true. And I believe we are still uh, at the beginning of utilizing uh, such technologies to to our uh, advantage and security, and hopefully we are uh, we will be faster than adversaries uh, in using AI. Now uh, back to Mr. Sanjeev, we have talked a lot here about uh, what the companies are uh, are making or doing for security awareness. However, we're still seeing failures. So why do we leave our awareness programs are failing and we still see human error among the main reasons leading to successful cyber attacks? Nisreen, um, as I mentioned earlier, and I'm just trying to repeat the point again, uh, you know, there is a very strong change in the mental wellness structure for, for human beings to be connected virtually, you know, across the world as part of an organization or as part of different units. But that on one hand, it brings a favorable choice of being connected to everyone. On the other hand, it brings the, you know, the physical isolation uh, problems. You know, to say I need to interact, touch, feel, sense things, and just having a screen in front of you to to interact with the world uh, is not always taken upon very very you know constructively uh, by the human by the human being on the other end of the screen. So this actually poses a you know, strong challenge and a significant risk because by all means, human, human interactions in a systemic world, you, know, uh, you will need to have you know, an interaction which involves two channels. So there have to be two channels. There have to be two parties. And both the channels and both the parties have to be secure. You know, one drops the guard and the other party, you know, maybe intentionally or maybe unintentionally, as may be the case. But if one drops the guard, the other side possibly can turn malicious you know, without any forewarning, without any telltale sign. And, you know, this can result in a huge impact for the organizations. As you can know, it can have strong commercial, you know, reputational, brand-related impact. It can jeopardize the entire information structures that companies and enterprises have built over years, you know. And it takes one wrong move in order to jeopardize this entire setup. Uh, so what we try to do within within the organizations is, is is maintain a simple structure. I mean, I'll try to just maybe give the top seven, as we call it, the golden uh, seven guidelines that we ask people to follow. Usually, we just say number one, stay alert on how you're sharing information and whom you're sharing it with. So just be careful about it. You know, we try to inculcate these ideas amongst amongst the people so that they start taking things, you know, in a more conscious manner. Secondly, we try to ask them to separate their you know, business and private lives so that they do not talk about their jobs outside of work-related hours or work-related interactions, not on social media, not in any public occasions, unless it is warranted and approved. 
Third, more importantly, protect your personal and office details via passwords, via authentication mechanisms. At, at any point of time, do not share you know, your identity details with anybody. So that's the third rule that we try to look at. Number four, even from uh, you know, a security perspective, earlier this was more of on the ground physical presence, but even from a virtual forum, you need to keep cautious of who is around on the network, who is on the meeting. Is this person part of the company structure or is it an you know, unauthorized access? And more importantly, how do we try to make sure that you know, access is restricted to areas or information portals which are, which are strictly under surveillance from the company side? Number five, as always, you need to protect your equipment that you're using, as, as, as Mr. Maher very nicely you know, elucidated. You cannot share it with your you know, family members or not with your friends. So you need to protect your office equipment uh, in the state as has been given and protect the network from any unauthorized access. And this goes both the ways. This is with the technology side as well as with the user side. User being you know, the, the more uh, riskier of, of, of the two. Uh, that is what we want as number five. Number six, do not try to connect any unauthorized equipment to office network. We used to give a very simple example, you know, for example, uh, you know, Sanjeev is, is walking into the office and in the parking lot, he finds a USB stick, right? Now, as, as a responsible member of the organization, so should Sanjeev pick it up and connect it to his laptop? No. The directive is that he should hand it to the information security team and let them analyze. Uh, that is the right thing to do as the right, you know, enterprise citizen, as we call it, not to just pocket it because it's a freeware and I've got it. Maybe let me connect it to my system and see what's in there. So we have to inculcate those kind of ideas. Most importantly, the rule number seven is that whenever you're unsure about how you're handling information, please refer to policies, please refer to guidelines, directions, and as always, ask. The channels are always open. The IT team, the business team, everyone is there to help. Your friends, your colleagues are all there to help you within the organization in order to take any specific decision you need to. So just don't hesitate to ask and be open to you know, taking help from others. Those are the basic things I think are very, very critical and I think can definitely inculcate a huge change you know, in the way humans interact within the systems of today's enterprise. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Sanjeev, actually for these uh, steps, they are very comprehensive. Now, my question would go, we have touched on the topic of uh, culture and I think Mr. Muhammad has touched on it. And I want to ask uh, the question to Mr. Maher, what do you believe the main strategy that organization are following and can follow on the future? Maybe now we're still not following. However, what can we follow to enhance the security culture within the organization? Uh, other than awareness, what do you believe we can do more? Well, uh, first of all, let us agree on something. Uh, the security become like a business eliminator like now. It's not a, no longer is a liability. It's no longer a cost. So security culture required yeah, feeds care by the top management. It should be driven from the top to the bottom. And uh, it is not just IT security policy. It, there, there is many things can be done. Many things can be added to there. First of all, when we came to the security culture, we, we, we request from some of the organization to, to, to conduct a risk assessment, to check their security cultures, their views. As Mohammed, they said, we already know about it. We already knew about it. When we go to the, to, to the management, yeah, we already knew about that. But did you, did you conduct any risk assessment on that one? That will help you to understand in which uh, level you are, in which your organization security culture are. The second thing we already spoke about it is a security awareness. Let's call them an, a software. It's no longer a plan. It's no longer a, a program. It is a software right now, which can help you to give you the right analytical uh, decision on a way forward. Uh, the problem that, or it is like an issue over here. Uh, most of the organization believe that uh, or they have that opinion, op uh, an opinion that uh, a security matter, it's only for the IT department. It is not. Actually, uh, security culture required everyone in the organization to be in. 
security, it's fall for everyone. That will help actually uh, uh, the organization to scale up a uh, little bit uh, their security culture. And one of the things that I, I personally believe to make it more enjoyable, uh, if you add a reward or uh, recognize uh, those people uh, who do the right things in security, that will add a more interesting things to them actually. And instead of just punishing them when they are doing something wrong, you can reward them and you can recognize them in the organization. So people, they will start to uh, actually challenging each other to, to become more into the security. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Maher. Actually, you are right. Uh, we have employees or our org all people in the organization should feel that security is their job. It's part of their responsibility to protect the organization. It's not just IT and, or information security uh, uh, or, a job or responsibility. Now, I still have, I believe, three minutes. So I would like to ask each panelist to get, give me 30 seconds, final notes or final thoughts. If you think there's something you want to talk about this topic uh, that you would like to share as final thoughts. And I start with uh, Mr. Muhammad. Uh, yes, uh, uh, Ms. Reen. Uh, the uh, question again, please. Just uh, if you have final thoughts that you would like to share with us. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, yes. Just, uh, I, I have a very important uh, <laughs> comments on why the cybersecurity awareness uh, failed. Two things, as my colleague mentioned, uh, we need to have a clear uh, uh, mandate from senior management. And buy-in is not enough. However, we need a charter and mandate that's saying that awareness is not something like luxury. It is an actual. It's an actual protection control. It's part of the protect. If you look at NIST cybersecurity framework, it's actually a control. Uh, senior management uh, support is required. The, the second thing, uh, where I believe where uh, the awareness is failing, is the methodology, using the enforcement instead of adoption. People have tendency to circumvent cybersecurity policy because they are looking at them as obstacle. The only way to change this is by engagement. We need to engage all employees uh, to, the, to our journey toward uh, you know, uh, culture transformation and stay away from enforcement. Let them adapt the cybersecurity uh, by, by themselves. Um, uh, uh, the yeah. third one is, is, is the metrics and the measurement of that to see how we are progressing. These are the three key uh, things I believe is important. Thank you, Mr. Muhammad. I totally agree with you. The culture tone, the top enforcement, and the uh, making them feel part of the organization. Mr. Nadim, your thoughts, uh, final thoughts? Sure, sure. And and a few of them definitely intersect with what Mr. Muhammad said. So the first one for me would be proactive. You know, be proactive with cybersecurity. Uh, be proactive with digital risk, with the awareness around it. We're always going to be playing catch up with the bad guys. I mean, from shortages in in uh, in resources and in skills and all of that and technology, we're always going to be in, in, in catch up, but be proactive, try and get ahead of the curve in terms of what is specific to you in terms of risks, what is specific to you in terms of your organizations, et cetera. Um, and, and definitely be proactive from the top as well. We need the top uh, down uh, support. Uh, the second point would be, you know, the CISO is now important. It's as important as the CFO. Tie that, tie those two roles together with metrics like ROI, et cetera, on all of that. And the last, last point, um, try and socialize cybersecurity, demystify the the, uh, the the mystery around it, try and remove it, discuss with your colleagues and other teams, the brand, the legal department, try and bring them in uh, willingly, of course, if, they, if they're interested, and, and try and, and socialize the concept of security with the wider organization, because some some departments, like other, uh, other departments other than security, might look at this and say, it's not my job, it's too complicated, I don't want to get involved, but try and get them involved to demystify uh, these things. Thank you, Mr. Nadim tied to the organization and included with everyone and the uh, metrics. Mr. Uh, Sanjeev, your final thoughts, please. Thank you, Nisreen. Uh, I'll try to sum it up in, in six small points. Uh, number one, and most importantly, endpoint security is as important, or if not more, as much as enterprise application security. People always stress 
very, very much on the endpoint security business. But as I said, as an organization, we must guide not only the main door, but also the back door to your house. So you need to give equal precedence to both of them. Number two, anticipate and plan ahead. In today's world, with the shortage of resources, with the fast you know, adaptation of different malware attacks and, and cyber threats, we definitely need to anticipate as much as we can and plan ahead. Third and more importantly, keep your employees informed, educated and aware and equipped to handle plausible security threats. They are going to be your front guard at the door. While you're not there, they are the ones who are manning the doors. So make sure that they are equipped with the right things. Um, always try to maintain checks and balances and counter checks around their authentication mechanisms to make sure that they are in line, proven and connected in the most recent manner. Last but not the least, look at the constant updation of user rights and access controls. Uh, in today's organization, with the number of people going and leaving, this can move very fast. So be very fast at acting on it. Check for any anomalous behavioral patterns or any telltale signs of plausible threats. This can be done using artificial intelligence and machine learning mechanisms to incorporate in your security. Uh, and again, in terms of user access and user ease, please try to think of how you can allow bring your own device structure or any other ways of making users' life easy, uh, but maintain a cautionary mode in terms of how it interacts with the enterprise security. Those for me, I think, are the other prominent areas. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sanjeev. Totally agree. Access review, access rights, access endpoints uh, as well, and enable people to do their job at the end of the day. Mr. Maher, our final speaker, and your final thoughts, please. Uh, you are on mute. Yes, uh, as I mentioned uh, previously, that uh, the security now it is a business labeler. So, on the other hand, uh, this is, will be like a card for the organization to survive. So, uh, this is one thing. The other things that people uh, like a CISO they start to become uh, scared from uh, implementing AI and helping them in uh, in the security. Uh, detection and uh, response. Well, uh, just to make sure that if you refuse to use it, the hackers and the breachers, they already, they already in the track and they already implement AI to help them, them hacking the other organization. So you just be ready for that one and uh, don't scare from AI. Thank you so much. Sure. So let's implement AI in our organizations. Let's uh, be proactive. Let's be prepared for the, because uh, hackers, adversary people are always uh, advancing at the technology. We need to prepare our organizations. We need to prepare our personnel to be ready. Let's focus on what our organization needs more and let's educate our people and make them feel part of the security. Uh, by this, uh, I conclude my, the session. I would like to thank very much my uh, esteemed panelists, Mr. Muhammad, Mr. Maher, Mr. Nadim, and Mr. Sanjeev for your valuable input. Uh, it was really a pleasure uh, talking to you and uh, getting from your experience and insights. And uh, I give back control to the organizers. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nasreen, uh, for moderating it so wonderfully. Thank you so much, uh, Sanjeev, Mohammed, uh, Mahir, and uh, Nadeem for your valuable time. Definitely whatever uh, anecdotes you uh, quoted and whatever you know experience you could share in this panel discussion definitely will go uh, lengths and breadths uh, with, with the panel uh, who's here today. So thank you once again and uh, for being part on behalf of Trescon Global. We thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.